Should I just... Yeah, you're just gonna sit there like that, okay? So my friends, I have a very special guest today. This is my friend, Jabba, also known as the Hiking Viking, and you're probably thinking... What's his real name? Yeah, what's his real name and why do we care about hiking? This is a bike channel. Yeah, well the Hiking Viking liked him some biking last year. Whoa, and he rhymes. And he's a really fun guy. I met him a couple years ago when he was the crew chief for Scott Jurek's attempt at running the Appalachian Trail for the second time. And then we've got the Hiking Viking out here just jamming. Look at him. We connected because he's fun and he's goofy. Same, same. He's fun and goofy. Totally, totally, totally. And then um, we were talking about adventures and he's like, I want to ride the Great Divide and then maybe even more. Well, hold on. At first, you, were, I was, while we were in that van together on Scott's run, you know, you were talking to me about bikepacking because I had never been introduced to the world of yeah. bikepacking. So I was learning about your adventures and how cool it is. And they, you had your own signature bike, the Priority 600X Adventure. Ooh. And I have my own signature backpack, yeah. the Mountain Smith Zerk 40. Yeah. And, you know, it just kind of made sense. I wanted to take this aging body into the new era of 40 plus, you know, <laughs> on the years on this earth. And biking just seemed like the, you know, the next step. So, totally. So you and got me one of your bikes. I got you the 600X. It's Thanks, Priority. Make... Thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. <laughs> I have yet to get one of your backpacks, though. Well. Thanks for sharing the wealth. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> so when I say that he's known for hiking, I'm, I don't just mean like he goes on little day hikes. He has hiked all of the long trails in the United States multiple times. Give us a quick resume. Appalachian Trail twice, once in winter, starting in Maine in the first week of December, Whoop. Uh, which is one of the latest uh, starts on record uh, for for that, you know, going uh, from Maine to I said a Georgia. quick resume. But then I've done the Continental Divide Trail, I've done the Pacific Crest Trail twice, I've done the Arizona Trail, the Colorado Trail twice, I've done the, um, you know, the... the <laughs> you just said it too the fast. The Wind River Route, the I've done Wind the River. Sierra High Route, I've done the okay. a bunch of other stuff, uh, including uh, the Jordan Trail in the Middle East. At least from you know Syria to the wow. Red Sea. So. That's cool. So he is no stranger to long adventures. Thirty thousand miles at this point in my career. Walking. Walking. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So he's no stranger to long adventures. We got him a bike because he wanted to you know dabble in bike packing. And what did you do last summer? Well, I mean, anyone who starts bike packing, I can't imagine starts with any less than five thousand miles. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Some people start with maybe a weekend ride. No. Nope. But you had never done this before. I hadn't even taken your bike on an overnight trip yet. <laughs> I hadn't even put more than, I think, 10 to 15 miles into a couple of the training rides I went on with it. I hadn't even slapped the gear on it before the day before I was leaving to the southern border of Mexico <laughs> to start the Great Divide bikepacking route going northbound. So you went in totally inexperienced. Just naked from the waist down. Yeah, and you know? uh, that's your style, <laughs> and I love that about you. No bike you. seat, we know how this goes. Yeah, and so <laughs> he just went to the bottom of New Mexico with the, with the brand new bike. Bottom of New Mexico, barely brand ridden. new bike that was giving me a flat tire on the first day. There's the bacon strip, and the ceiling's just flowing out. I probably don't even have any sealant left. Oh man. It was leaking as soon as I pulled it out of the car. Yeah. That's user error by the way. That's Go. user error. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not doozer no, error. No, not doozer user error. error. <laughs> not loser error either, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. But I certainly had doubts pulling that. Okay, this is taking a really long time to get into this. Okay. I've got time. Okay. <laughs> they don't. They have things to do. Uh, okay, so fast forward, then. you're like, I'm going to ride the Great Divide all the way up and then I'm going to ride the Western Wildlands route all the way back down, how much? Five thousand-ish miles. And I had never even heard of the Western Wildlands route until like, you know, maybe a month or two before I started. Yeah, again, because you're not a bike packer, you. you're not in the community. Yeah. But you wanted to go on an adventure of a lifetime, and yeah. you did. How was the like first day? Were you like, I love moving faster than walking? Well, it was like, first of all, it was like the first week of June. Mm, warm. And it was very warm. It was. You know, 100 degrees a lot of days down there in the desert in New Mexico. Hey, aren't you the real hiking, viking, viking? One that, of those things. One of those guys. Maybe all of them. All of them. Fortunately, I was already acclimated because I'd already done 
500 miles of backpacking in mm. New Mexico just before that. Yeah, no so big deal. I was already acclimated to the desert, thankfully. Um, but the uh, most of the national, actually all of the national forest in New Mexico was closed due to like catastrophic fires happening last That's year. That's right. So I had to make my own route through New Mexico. Okay. But day one, I you know, yeah, I was on roads the whole time basically. Pavement. I think I threw down about fifty miles on day one, something okay. like that. Right on. So and that was a, a late a later start. That was the longest one. ride at that time of your life, fifty. By miles. far, by far, by far. Yeah. How'd your butt feel? Fine. 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 How, Fine. Does, how does your butt feel now? Uh, better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> butt didn't, didn't feel fine every day, but it certainly wasn't nearly as bad as some of the horror stories I had heard. I never I never ended up con, you know contracting true saddle sores. Yeah, no open good. saddle sores. I didn't good. have a single one. You don't want that. Doesn't mean it wasn't tender down there and, and painful at times. Well, you're, there's a lot of tender about I've you. got a lot of you know, pushing for the... Wait. No, this is a family <laughs> channel. No, a uh, cushion for the bike seat. That is yeah, what I'm yeah, trying to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you do your first day. You have some mechanical issues. You you don't know how to fix a bike. It's all new to you. No, 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 no. Good thing you're on a 600. I've X, never is... changed a tire. Okay. I've never fixed anything on a bike. But YouTube exists, you know. YouTube. Yeah. And so does Doozer. Yeah, he would call me constantly, like, um, oh, there's something happening. Oh, okay, that's no problem. Just, wanna Just learn. Do this. Just wanted to learn. You yeah. Know? Learn and, to fly um, and learn on the. What did you love? most about it I mean it's a much different way of moving your body than with your feet but it's still human powered um, well you know what was interesting for me was that like um, you know with all the miles that I put on my body I was also in the Marine Corps for four years in the infantry I've done a lot of wear and tear on this body with backpacking and you know with, with Marine Corps and with just for being a four sport athlete before that my back's not what it used to be. My knees aren't what they used to be. I've had a couple surgeries on one of my knees. Yeah. And what I discovered about bike packing is you can cover a lot of ground and with almost, you know, little to no impact unless you're having catastrophic uh, yeah. accidents, which I didn't have any of those, fortunately. Good. You want to keep the rubber side down, yeah. as they well, say. I mean, that's a suggestion, I feel like. That, <laughs> um, but so I, it was. It agreed with my body. It, it, yeah. it was just a lot of fun to, I like going fast too, yeah. just like Ricky Bobby. All right. My way towards Chama. I, I want to go fast. Yeah, yeah I hear so, you. <laughs> so, like, I periodically, you know, whenever I'd have a downhill, a significant downhill, I would have my phone, you know, attached to my my handlebars, and I would just, how fast can I get this thing going? Yeah. You know, I'd have my Gaia and my Strava going, and I would see, you know, like the stats of the day at the end of the day, like what was my top speed, and there would be like. 50. You're like 15 miles an hour. 50, 56, yeah, 57. Man, I think cool. I was at 57 point like eight was like my top speed you one just, day. You know, down oh, arrow, yeah, yeah. arrow, and I'm, zoom in. And the great thing about your bike is the the you know the all the gears that you have the top gear yeah. is like legit. You can crank. You can really crank on that thing going downhill. 600 percent gear ratio, no big deal. I know Thank what that you, means, opinion. but that's cool, right? Like yeah. like let's put it this way: for the couple of times I was like biking with other bike bike packers. Um, I was always smoking them. Like they yeah. didn't have the, the high end gear that I yeah. had. Right great. on, man. I loved it. Well, I loved following your adventure on Instagram. I will yeah. put it right here or here or here, wherever. Yeah. The hiking Viking. He, he's very entertaining, as you can see. Lots of energy. Got me. I loved following the adventure because you're you're very good at telling stories. If this guy's telling you you have a lot of good adventure, you know it's true. That's true. Because this guy's got a lot of really good I, energy. I, I know some. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I feed off of energy. Yeah. And so when I first met you, I was like, oh, this guy's a lot of fun. What rhymes with hiking? A Viking. And Vikings are warriors. That's right. Ah! And you went through New Mexico, Colorado, the whole Great Divide. And, you know, day by day, I'm guessing you're getting stronger. You're getting more comfortable. You're figuring out different totally. things on the bike. Changing, changing up my gear as well, like yeah. different uh, bike packing equipment. Just because you know you want to learn, you want you got to try different stuff to learn too. Yeah. And what you maybe they haven't heard yet was it was never my intention to start the West, Western Wildlands route, like yeah. in addition to the Great Divide. Like that was an idea I concocted while I was out there because yeah, like, I was loving it that much. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to stop at Canada. <laughs> and when I got there, I figured since I gone this far, I might as well turn around. Just keep on going. Because the end point on, well, the northern terminus, I should say, my end point on the Great Divide route was going to be the Canadian border. Yeah. I wasn't going to do yeah. go all the way up. Yeah. But that's the same point for the Western Wildlands route yeah. that starts in the Canadian border. So I was like, I'm already here. 
Yeah. Let's just turn Let's around. Let's just keep this party hey, going. I like, I'll be done in no time. It was not no Because it's downhill? Yeah. <laughs> so this was like a total Forrest Gump moment. Yeah. You were like, I'm just going to keep on going. I just felt like biking. I felt like biking. Yeah. Might as well just turn back. Keep right on going. And it's an inspirational thing that you've never done this before. Yeah. You have no background, but you started loving it immediately. Yeah. What, what did you love most about traveling by bike? Was it the speed? Was it that you could carry more gear? Because I know with backpacking- I got to eat better. You get to eat better. Yeah, with backpacking, you have to have all this dried foods and stuff because you're out in the middle of nowhere for so long. You got to carry it on your back. Yeah. Well, the bike is carrying the weight. Now, yeah, your muscles got to work, but muscle soreness and muscle fatigue is totally different than like foot soreness and yeah. back soreness and shoulder soreness and yeah. hips soreness and yeah. just like you're just exerting a total body differently uh, with bike with backpacking than you are with bike packing. So it doesn't mean that the bike packing is not challenging. Yeah. It's just different, but it's easier in some respects. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying it's like easy. I'm just saying in some respects it's easier. Because I imagine on backpacking trips, you might be camped out 12 miles from a town, which is kind of far to walk. I mean, but it's well, a half day of hiking depending on your pace. On a bike, you can be like, I'm gonna zip into town and get some dinner and then come back and camp. Or, yeah, exactly. And then just push on, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. You, yeah, so I had to carry less equipment and less food. Pancakes, bacon, sausage, and egg and cheese. Oh, and showering and cleaning your clothes is very important <laughs> to keep maintaining Good grundle hygiene. Oh, yes, really. Is that, is that why you didn't get those saddle sores? Probably. Yeah, man. Yeah. So you're probably the first human that I know of who did the double, the, the, the whole Great Divide and then the Western Wildlands in one fell swoop, 5,000 miles, four months, right? So the, I, I reached out to some people that, are, like in the Instagram world, who were like well to do. Uh, in the bike packing like community and world, yeah. and I stumbled upon a dude named Kurt Refsnyder. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, who worked he started for, bike packing roots? Exactly, co-founder as far as okay. I, I know, and he also helped I think co-find the Western Wildlands route as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not super. He, we're not like buds or anything like that. I just. But you would a, be. I, we would be. We had a few <laughs> interactions when I was just like getting my feet wet in this yeah. the whole world, and I you know posed the idea. I was like, hey, I was like, what do you know about this Western? Wildlands, right? He's like, well, it's a route I, you know, yeah. helped to uh, create. And uh, as far as I know, um, nobody has ever completed the full circuit of both the GDMBR and the Western Wildlands route. He's like, there's one guy out there right now, and I don't know how far he's gotten. And then it turned out later on down the road that that that, that guy stopped updating his oh. route, and I don't think he ever completed. So you're it. number one. Uh, hey, uh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's, but, if he's not. But it is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's cool. I think more people are going to like maybe hear your story and be like, I want to do the double. Well, let's put it this way. Like, uh, you know, the GDMBR took you how long? You know, it's about like a month, give or take. Right. Yeah. So, and a month to the, uh, you know, to a normal person, not saying you're a normal person, but to a normal person, a month is like a long journey. Yeah, yeah. To me, I'm used to like four to seven month long journeys. Yeah. So to do another, you know, two months or whatever I took to go back down, um, no you know, deal. It, I mean, it wasn't quite two months each way. It yeah. was less than that. Um, but yeah, it was just like, it felt right to keep going into like autumn. Well, just got stopped by the cops and he stopped to give me water. Filled up these two bottles, chugged a bunch. Now you love bikes. You love riding I love bikes. bikes. I love bikes. <laughs> and you still love hiking. You'll still oh, yeah. So now you're going to be the hiking, biking, viking for sure. Whatever you want to call it. H. <laughs> I'm going to call it that. V. I'm going to call it that. Hiking, biking, viking. <laughs> Do you have any dreams in the future of other adventures? Um, well, certainly I. there's been talks of potentially doing the Arizona Trail this spring. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll see about that. Okay. Um, and I would love to do an adventure with you sometime. We've been hoping. We're going to make it you happen. Know, we haven't been on a trail together since... The you Appalachian know, Trail. 2021, and, and were we even ever on the trail together? Not I don't much. think we were. Not much. Uh, it'd be fun to just ride side by side with you holding hands. Yeah. Not this <laughs> way, <laughs> the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, I, you know, it would be, it'd be amazing to ride across Iceland. It'd be amazing to, mm -hmm. you know, ride down through Central America into South America. Yeah. I mean, geez, like, 
where wouldn't there be a, an interest to go ride? So yeah. Well, bikepacking is blowing up in general. Bikepacking.com yeah. is a huge website. Everybody yeah. goes there to get inspiration and look at their roots yeah. um, and gear and all that stuff. And there's a reason why people love it because it is a sport that's fun because you're riding a bike. Yeah. And you know, when you dream back to some of your first childhood memories, maybe it is when you learned how to ride a bike and totally. you have that feeling of freedom. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are regaining that that sense of just excitement riding a bike. Well, it's just like, you know, to to have the the freedom to go wherever you want more quickly, but yeah. under your own human power, yeah. it's like a perfect marriage between like being on a motorcycle and being on foot, yeah. you know? But it's the human powered part is like, there's a rewarding element at the end of a journey, at the end of a day, yeah. to where you started and where you got to, you know? And, and I think I was just con continuously fueled by, you know, seeing my, you know, where I was on a map, constantly covering great distances. I mean, I went from, you know, day one, 50 miles being my biggest day to like doing a 130 mile day yeah. the next week. I'm at 113 miles in a day. It's been hotter than shit. I'm eating a burrito. I still have like, I don't know, like 10 to 15 miles to go. You were doing big miles. Like you weren't. I did contract a little bit of an Achilles uh, oh. tightness that had to be managed. I, did, I took like, I think like a 10 day break to let some Achilles strain yeah. uh, heal up. But that's because and I just, like I said, I just want to go fast. I want to go big. I want to go far. I want to go hard. You. And my body said, hey, slow down, dude. This is your first time being on a bike. So, but <laughs> it, it's still like, it's re it was rewarding. It, and like, you, there's a lot of lessons uh, continuously, you know, being taught to you on a mm -hmm. daily basis, especially with a new mode of travel. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was really inspiring to see how quickly you embraced it and loved it. Do you have any advice for somebody out who, there who's like, you know, I would love to get into bikepacking, but I'm a little nervous because of this and this and this, or the gear or the terrain or my physical fitness? What would you say? <laughs> I would say, listen, I'm like, when I started biking, I was like 225 pounds. Mm -hmm. Like you can be any weight you want to yeah. get on a bike. Your, your fitness level doesn't even matter that much. Mm -hmm. Like you just got to start and you just got to go and you got to not give up and you got to like listen to your body and you got to like not push yourself to the brink of like extinction yeah. while you're out there. Yeah, Cause you want to have fun. Yeah. The whole point is to be on an adventure, to enjoy yourself. Yes. Challenging yourself is fun and getting right over the edge of discomfort sometimes, but you want to be at the end of the day, like this is so awesome. I think I would say that the biggest hurdle for most people who have not, who don't own a bike yet for, yeah. for this is deciding what bike to get. Yeah. And quite frankly, <laughs> Your bike was the perfect bike to use for, yeah. a, for especially for a noob. And I know you're not a noob, but like yeah. you put in so many miles and hours and m days and months in biking. And then you like said, Hey, I want to make the, just, just I made a, a backpack that bike. was like perfect for my yeah. application. And you made a bike that was perfect for your application. And it's so good that you, uh, you can be a literal, like idiot when it comes to bikes and get, and I was and kind of still am but I had like that bike took a beating from me and I was yeah. just unrelenting with how hard yeah. I would brutalize that thing yeah. and by and large no structural issues no drivetrain issues um that that internal gearbox from Gates and Pinion and the carbon drivetrain yeah it was amazing it's, it's pretty cool like it really is yeah you know just anything can break it's mechanical yeah but the bike is strong and yeah. i did not pay him to say any of this nope. it's very nice he didn't you. he didn't give me the bike i'm not gonna lie like <laughs> yeah but, we gave him the but bike. honestly i don't think there's another bike that w makes sense for me yeah you know like, yeah and if you ever ride another bike you're cut out, out. No, out of your here. friends and you're gonna delete this video from the library <laughs> exactly take 10 percent of the give me a quick money here <laughs> highlight of a because somebody out there might might be thinking i want to do the gdmbr or the western wildlands route what are they getting into as far as the route, the terrain, the beauty, the, the magic moments, trail magic? It's not without its like challenging sections mm -hmm. from time to time, but honestly, it's all pretty darn rideable. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of people's like concerns can be like when you're on like paved road with other vehicles on the road. Yeah. Slow down. I didn't have, and I know this isn't like everybody's experience, but I didn't have any like significant issues with like drivers being 
you know, jerks to yeah. me or like, yeah. you know, swerving at me, you know, whatever. Like I had no issues. I, I just trusted, I put a lot of faith and trust in, in people. And that's, they're probably scared of the beard. I, I mean, I'm certainly not your average sized rider. <laughs> I mean, yeah, his arms are pretty big. <laughs> I'm you, don't, you don't want to mess I'm with this enough. guy. <laughs> um, no, I'm a beat wad. Yeah. So, so I imagine that I'm, I'm not being involved in some of the more <laughs> iffy situations that so other solo riders were, but I did, mo you know, aside from nine days, I did all of those 5,000 miles solo. Yeah. And I, I was just really rewarding. And, um, I, you know, I honestly, the biggest, besides, you know, finding the right bike, the biggest hurdle is just saying, I'm going to do it. And yeah. then just doing it mm -hmm. because you can come up with a thousand reasons why not to, but really all you need is one reason why to. Yeah. Um, and in this day and age when, you know, uh, we're just getting closed in more and more by our society and uh, these concrete jungles and technology. Like yeah. we need to get out more. You need to get out more. Yeah. And the, the more that I'm outside, the happier I am inside. I know that for a fact. That's a good, I like how you put that. Yeah. Say that again. Um, the more I'm outside, the happier I am inside. That's I like that. It's literally the first time I ever said that in my life, and I don't know why I haven't said wow, it before. Wow, that's deep, man. Thanks, bro. <laughs> deep inside. <laughs> oh, there we go again. Hey, that was actually not uh, being inappropriate. You took okay. it that way. Cool. <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about? Just kidding. <laughs> But again, you know, not everybody has the time to do a gigantic four month. This is my ride. career. Yeah, true. this I, is what I, he does. He's I an get adventurer. To do this for fun. You know, but if you're out there and you're thinking, I would love to travel by bike, you know, you don't have to do anything giant. You can go do a two night trip yeah. on the weekend and just get to know what it feels like to move all of you and your gear on a bike and sleep under the stars right and set up country your tent. roads. Country roads as the sun is setting, rainbows. Yeah. You know, listening to nature, there's nothing better. And you get to do that day after day. Yeah. And whenever I come back from my adventures, I always feel a lot more connected to nature and to myself and That's to what's important. That's the big one, in my opinion. You know, Be you come back yourself. and you're just, your heart is a little bit more tender and you're more loving. Are you, are you that way? Yeah, I mean, when I'm out there, like, I mean, that's where I can, like, connect cl most uh, deeply with, like, my emotional sides. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and if you don't think you have them, I mean, go you spend, do. go s try and go spend, you know, a, a month outside um, <laughs> for as, or as long as you can. The longer I am on, a, on an adventure, the more and more introspective I mm -hmm. get. And the more and more in tune with myself I become, and it's because you, there's nothing hiding you from yourself. There's nothing distracting you from yourself. You're not staring at your phone all day long, being bombarded by thousands of other accounts trying to get you to, you know, buy their products or be like them. Or you get to like literally be with yourself. Yeah. Like that's the biggest like takeaway is that you get to like literally find yourself. That's why I've been doing this for. A decade, man. Yeah. I, I've been living this life for a decade, and there's no there, the reason I keep doing it is because I keep remaining yeah. in touch with myself more and more and more. And and my audience has heard this, but I always feel like my adventures make me a better human. When yeah. I come back, I am just more compassionate and more patient with people and myself. Just like gratitude, for gratitude. Just even living. Yeah, <laughs> you just appreciate the little yeah. things when you can like. You appreciate walk. a toilet. You appreciate being able to like. There's just there's things that yeah. allow you to have a, a different perspective and a different point of view to appreciate yeah. things when you when you like you know remove the the you know the creature comforts mm -hmm. the the compa you know uh, excuse me like you just become more grateful that's yeah, really what it is 100 percent. yeah and that and then you like you spread that love to your friends and your family and then you're like before you know it you're a hippie with a long beard yep <laughs> just to shave this beard twice a day in the marine corps now <laughs> now i haven't seen my face since 2013. really yeah wow yeah. how does your girlfriend feel about that she's only ever seen me with a beard so wow she better feel great <laughs> <laughs> Java, my man, hey, you're dude. so fun, brother. Thank you for coming and chatting with <laughs> us. We've been talking on. for a little over 20 minutes. That was I hope you all enjoy minutes. this. Go follow his adventures on Instagram. At the Real Hiking Viking. The Real. The Real. The Real one, because there's Not a the, fake one yeah, out there. I actually have that handle too, but. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I wish you all the best on your adventures. Thanks, I hope to do, there you put it there, partner. Yeah, hey, yeah, Captain America. <laughs> You know, I hope we get to do something fun someday. I love your energy I'm and sure who you are and what you're about. I'm and sure um, I hope you've inspired some people out there to try this out. And to get out there. And to get out there <laughs> on the 600X. Get outside more, get inside more. <laughs>
That's right. <laughs> High five. Hi ya. Hey. <laughs> and this dog that you kept saw, seeing come over here, her name is Emmy, and she's on the couch now. Oh, Asleep. let's see. Should we move the cat? Oh, you yeah, yeah, we gotta, gotta show gotta the cute it. little dog. Oh, Look how cute job. she is. Oh, so we love you, Emmy. Don't look directly at the camera to stay your soul. All right. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe and like. <laughs> <laughs>